the material on business architecture in version 9.1 was pretty high level. We threw in some useful terms, but never actually explained how you use them properly, nor actually explained what those terms mean. For the last four years, we've had a team within the open group dedicated to evolving business architecture, top down from the business itself, and a little bit more bottom up, linking to the concepts in the TOGAS standard. So in version 9.2, the business architecture is significantly enhanced. Don't worry if you can't read the diagram on the right, we're going to come on to a bigger version of that in a minute. That was just to make the slide look slightly less death by power, PowerPoint ish. So the, the approach to business architecture has been strengthened. There are new entities, new things that we're going to architect, new relationships, new artifacts, in other words, new models, new diagrams that, that we recommend people should consider. Importantly, there is a stream of new guide documents which build on the summary information in the standard and introduce a lot more detail. So far, we've got business capabilities and value streams. Uh, we've got one on business models very close to deployment now. So here is the context for the work we've done on business architecture. One important change that we've made is we've tightened up on terminology. We have the word capability. What we've done now is we've explicitly identified an ability that something owns within a business context. So we've introduced business capability. So business capability is a particular ability that a business may possess or exchange to achieve a specific purpose. So that is clearly linked to the organization of the, or of the organization because a business function has got, has the ability to deliver business capabilities, has the ability to do stuff. We've got the concept of a value stream. And a value stream is a collection of activities that together create an overall result for a customer, a stakeholder, or an end user. We've always had, over on the left-hand side of this diagram, a goal, something that we want to achieve. What we've done is we've introduced into business architecture the idea of a course of action. And a course of action is a direction and focus provided by the goals and objectives, which enable us to identify what value streams we need and what business capabilities we need to support those value streams. So we've got these three new entities in the business architecture. So business capabilities, hierarchically decomposed, abilities that the business has, may possess or needs to possess to achieve a specific purpose. So this is a particular version of a capability map. It's a heat map. Uh, really good communication vehicle because the green boxes say we're okay in these areas we're fine yellow boxes uh, what we have exists but needs improvement improvement red boxes these are capabilities that we need in order to succeed a value stream it's a very va simple value stream for a recruitment activity but it shows the things that have to be done in order that you can achieve the eventual result, onboarding the employee. So representation of the end-to-end -end collection of value-adding activities that create the overall result. And as you can see on this diagram, one of the big values is actually linking those business capabilities to the value streams. Which capabilities do we need to support each of these steps? have the idea of an organization map. So this is, uh, I guess, confusingly similar to an org chart, but it isn't an org chart, because the key thing here is 
to represent the depth of the relationships between the primary entities that make up the enterprise, together with its partners, its stakeholders, its, its business partners. So we're not concerned so much with the people as with the relationships that we need. An important change in business architecture in, in version 9.1 we start to talk about business architecture mainly in phase B. The business architecture folk have said you cannot define an architecture vision without doing some business architecture work because that has an impact on the plan that you're going to put in place. So we start to create the business architecture artifacts in the architecture vision phase, phase A, then we refine these, we extend them, we build on them in the business architecture phase. So there is a lot more behind this. As I've said already, there are other detailed guides that support this. 